Good day. Today, we're going to discuss the part 2 of our lesson, Asian Regionalism. Last time, I have introduced to you in the first part uh, what regionalism is. And right now, we are going to discuss specifically what is uh, the elements of uh, what are the elements of Asian regionalism how do we describe this how do we characterize Asian regionalism so first okay let's go to Asia first Asia is the largest and most populated continent in the world. We are in Asia and geographically it is separated from the European continent by the Urals. Urals is the mountain range, the Ural Mountains. From Africa by the Suez Canal, from North America from by the Bering Strait, and it is comprised of distinct regions such as Central Asia, East Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, where we are, and the Middle East. You remember the last time uh, we talked about uh, how, how we interpret, interpret regions in Liba on our first part. Uh, sinabi natin na we can see a region by the geographical unit. So, tinitingnan natin ang Asia dito sa kanyang uh, location geographically. Tingnan natin ang uh, uh, Asia. Ito yung Asian continent. Hindi ba? So, yung sinasabi ko sa inyong uh, border. Ito yung Ural Mountains. Ito yung sinasabi na border from the European continent. Ang border naman na, ng Asia sa Africa ay ito. Nandito ang Suez Canal. Hindi na siya masyadong makita dito, pero ang Suez Canal ay uh, ang uh, nagdudugtong sa Mediterranean Sea. Ito yun. At ang Red Sea. And uh, ang Suez Canal ay man-made. Isa itong isang malaking kanal kung saan dito ay nagta-travel ang mga uh, iba't iba na mga uh, ships kung saan kung halimbawang ay nanggagaling ka dito sa Middle East at pupunta ka sa London, Europe. Kung dati ay nung um, 1800s ay nung ginawa ito ay uh, uh, iikot ka pa dito sa coastline ng continental Africa ngayon ay makakadaan ka na dito ang uh, Suez Canal ay nasa area ay nasa bansang uh, Egypt yun ang nakakasakop doon so yun ang nagsisilbi na border ng Asia sa South Africa sa Africa sa African continent not South Africa, the African continent. Dito naman sa North America, ito naman yung Bering Strait. Ito yun, no? Ito yung uh, maliit na strait and then North America na itong part na ito. So, ito yung uh, nag, ito yung pagtining na natin yung Asia geographically. And, of course, ang iba't ibang bansa na nasa iba't ibang mga regions. Asia has been the cradle of several ancient civilizations such as the Chinese, Indian, and Khmer civilizations. Kung naaalala nyo sa inyong nung kayo ay high school, ito ay inaral natin kung hindi ako nagkakamali or during our uh, second year high school or uh, grade uh, grade 8 or grade 9 ninyo. Um, Pinag-aralan natin yung iba't ibang mga history ng mga bansa at yung mga ancient civilizations, yung mga mahihilig sa inyo sa history. Itong tatlong to ay ilan lang sa mga binanggit ko, pero madami pang ibang civilizations na nabuo talaga sa Asia. Ito, 
Kaya nyo bang i-determine kung saan ito? Look at this. Of course, this is the Great Wall of China. Ito naman, on the right side, ito yung tinatawag na Terracotta Army. Ang Terracotta Army ay parang isa itong uh, nahukay. Nahukay ito sa isang probinsya sa China. At uh, nakita na libo-libong mga uh, warriors or army na gawa sa Terracotta ang uh, ang nakita, ito ay parang pagbibigay pugay sa unang emperor ng China. And uh, ito ay napakatagal ng taon. At uh, ito ay na-discover sa isang uh, lugar dito sa, pro- sa isang probinsya sa China. So this is an example of ancient civilizations sa China. Ito naman, can you recognize this site? This is the Angkor Wat Temple in uh, the Kingdom of Cambodia. Kung uh, mahilig kayo sa movies, baka napanood nyo na to sa Tomb Raider kay Angelina Jolie. Dito ito, Shinut. And, uh, and um, makikita ninyo na uh, alam nyo yung parang sa Temple Run, parang ganito yung game na Temple Run. Ganito yung uh, parang design or inspiration ng design. Uh, I've been here in 2004. I've seen this tree. And uh, talagang nilamon na ng punong ito ang, uh, ang uh, temple. Isa sa mga temple. Napakalaking complex nito. Parang isang bayan na may iba't ibang mga temples. Isa to sa pinaka nakakamangha na na mga historical ancient sites na napuntahan ko and uh, and it's it's very grand and this was built in the uh, 12th century so um 1200s to 1200s so doon ito na buo and yung kanyang architecture ay napakaganda so pwede nating sabihin na Even in the past, in the ancient times, ay meron ng skills, engineering, architectural skills yung mga tao dito sa Asia to be able to design such as this. Ang mga batong ito, yan, ang mga batong yan ay hinila ng mga elepante mula sa mga kabundukan para madala dito. Kung paano yun nangyari, kung paano nila napagdikit-dikit ito at paano na itayo, yun yung mga wonders talaga itong Angkor Wat sa Siem Reap, Cambodia. Ang isa pang um, sinasabi natin is that uh, ang Asia has also been the home of influ- influential cultural, philosophical, and religious movements. Ang iba't ibang reliyon tulad ng Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, Taoism, and other Oriental philosophies and religions generally originated from an Asian country and have proliferated, kumalat, sa buong mundo. So, do you remember Confucius? Uh, diba, meron siyang Confucian na mga kasabihan, uh, philosophies na y- yon yon iba't ibang mga uh, religious philosophies ang nabuo dito sa Asian continent. Again, when we look at the uh, different regions in Asia, makikita natin ang Central Asia, East Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East. Una, sa Central Asia muna tayo. It is important in the Silk Road trade uh, between China and the Roman Empire Um, nabanggit ko na ito early on, yung, uh, yung Silk Road. Uh, although madami pang mga produkto na dinadala mula sa China, papuntang Roman Empire, ito'y libong taon na nakaraan, ay uh, silk. Silk kasi yung naging parang main na produkto 
uh, na dinadala from uh, China kaya um, tinawag din ito na Silk Road. So ito ay mula uh, China hanggang makarating sa Europa. Sa East Asia, so ano yung mga bansa sa Central Asia? Ito yung mga Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Armenia, Tajikistan, at iba pa. Uh, mostly uh, part sila ng dating Soviet Union. Diba? Diniscuss natin last time. Ang East Asia naman, it's cradle of ancient civilizations, China, Japan, Mongolia, bahagi din ng East Asia, ang Korea, and um, of course, ang Mongolia, uh, napaka-rich din ng history niya. And um, ayun, ang South Asia naman, uh, India, um, the, the, the Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, um, it's high population density, the cradle of Indian civilization. Then very rich din naman yung kultura at yung civilization, civilization sa India. Southeast Asia, kung saan nandun tayo? It's located in the Asia-Pacific Ring of Fire. Historically, the gold destination of European expeditions that search for spice. Kaya nga nakarating si Magellan dito sa shores of the Philippines uh, ay dahil nagahanap sila ng mga spices na madadala nila at maibebenta nila pagbalik nila sa Europa, sa Espanya. Ang uh, Middle East, uh, these are arid desert regions but serve as gateways to major bodies of water in the world. Um, naalala nyo kanina yung sinabi ko na Suez Canal, Red Sea, Mediterranean. So these are bodies of water around that specific area. So sa Middle East, alam naman natin na nandito ang uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, United Arab Emirates, Oman, at, at uh, iba pa na mga bansa, Kuwait, yon. So that's the overview of the regions in Asia. In the contemporary world, Asia has become an econo economic force characterized by reduced poverty and fast-paced economic development. That's according to ADB, the Asian Development Bank, in 2008. Um, Asian Development Bank is also a lender, katulad ng World Bank, at ang headquarters ng ADB ay nandito sa Manila, Philippines. Specifically, ang office nila ay nasa uh, katabi ng Mega Mall doon sa area na yon, sa Mandaluyong. Asia was the central global force in early modern world economy. It was the site of most important trade routes or routes and in some places more advanced in technology than West, such as science and medicine. So sinasabi natin na yung ilang mga bansa sa Asia has very advanced na mga technology and even their economies. And uh, it has also a lot of uh, influences in terms of science and medicine at iba pang mga fields of studies. Katulad na lang ng Japan. This is Japan uh, with a backdrop of Mount uh, Fuji. In Japan, Japan embarked on procuring raw materials like coal and iron and at unprecedented economies of scale, allowing them to gain a very competitive edge in the global manufacturing market as well as globalized shipping and procurement patterns which other countries modeled. Diba? Um, the technology in Japan is very fast-paced, ang kanilang robotics, and uh, yun yung describe dito. They have a very competitive advantage. Ito ay after ng, uh, uh, the World War II. Nag-accelerate yung kanilang development at uh, nakarating kung saan sila naroon ngayon na klase ng development uh, in terms of um, support to other countries, madaming naiibigay na grants uh, and loans ang Japanese government dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, madami ang pinondohan ng Japan. Either bigay nila as grant or pautang sa Pilipinas. 
India. This is uh, the Lotus Temple in uh, New Delhi, India. It's like a lotus flower. So, on India, India opened up and emphasized an export-oriented strategy. Export-oriented. They create a product and then they export. Textiles and other low-wage sectors have been a key part of the economy with highly successful software development exports. So, uh, not only on the people, uh, and daming software engineers na magagaling galing sa India. And yung software development din mismo ang uh, ginagawa. Programmers, programs, isa din sila sa may pinakamadaming contact centers, uh, business processing, process outsourcing countries, katulad ng Pilipinas, mga um, BPOs sa India. Kasi mahuhusay din ang mga uh, Indians in terms of software development. China, of course. Um, this picture that you see is uh, one of the key cities in China. This is, can you guess? This is Shanghai. Shanghai, China. Diba? Hindi ito lumpia. Pero ito ay ang city of Shanghai in China. It's a very modern city. And when you look at it, there, there are skyscrapers or buildings. Uh, it's uh, beautiful. Their skyline is beautiful. China pursues similar pattern of development at present and is now the world's largest importers of basic raw materials such as iron and surpassed Japan and the U.S. and Europe in steel production. Steel production, bakal. Uh, hindi natin alam, ang mga bahay natin ay gawa sa mga materyales na gawa sa China. Di ba nung um, nung nagkaroon tayo ng work on uh, on globalization at home, nakita natin, na-realize natin na ang dami pala nating mga gamit na ginawa, pinroduce, minu- minanufacture uh, sa China from plastic bottles to televisions to cell phones, chargers, uh, food. Iba? Every day we are surrounded by products that are made in China. India and China have also become major source of international migrant labor, which is also one of the fundamental characteristics of era of globalization. This includes the migration of highly skilled labor into high-tech industry based in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is in the United States. India, China, and the Philippines were three of the top four recipient states of migrant remittances. Okay, remittances, mga padala. Napakadami kasing mga Indian, Chinese, at mga Filipinos ang nagtatrabaho sa iba't ibang mga bansa. Yung kinikita nila sa iba't ibang mga bansa yon ay pinapadala nila sa kanika nilang mga hometown, sa kanika nilang mga pamilya na nakatira sa countries of origin nila. Yun ang tinatawag natin na remittances. Ngayon, yung remittances na yon ay ginagastos naman ng mga pinapadalahan nila at nakakatulong yon para uh, sa ekonomiya ng bansa. Para uh, makabili, makapag-consume ng pagkain, gamit, electronics, etc. para makapag-aral yung mga anak. So, sinasabi dito na ang India, China, and the Philippines ay tatlo sa apat ng mga bansa na namalalaki yung remittances. Yung isa doon ay ang Mexico kasi napakalaki din ng remittances na binibigay ng mga aga Mexico sa kanilang uh, mga bansa. Mga bansa at sa kanilang mga pamilya doon. So, isa yun sa bahagi pa ng globalization kasi yung migrant workers ay umaalis talaga. In the future, you wanted to be overseas Filipino workers. Um, you wanted to travel the world by working in cruise ships or probably uh, start your own business somewhere. So, bahagi din yon ng globalization. In culture and globalization in the region, Asia has been the source of a wide variety of cultural phenomena. 
that have spread outward to the western countries and the rest of the world madami ding cultural content na ibinibigay ang uh, ang ang cha, ang Asia uh, sa mundo examples look at this these are part of our childhood mga pinapanood natin sa TV at uh, nanjan kilala nyo sino ito sino yan sino yan and Dragon Ball One Piece sino pa ba yung mga iba hindi ko nakilala eh um, but generations from generations napakadami na uh, content cultural content na binibigay ng Asia sa mundo yung mga ito ay influence ng Japan. The Japanese animations. Yan. Pokemon. Pokemon has been very uh, talagang worldwide rich. And uh, nung sobrang umuso yung game na Pokemon Go ay isa ako sa medyo talagang naging very interested. Ang dami kong nahuhuling Pokemon sa mga malls. Tumatambay ako para makapanghuli. But, never kong nahuli si Pikachu. Until at such time na dinil ko na kasi parang wala na akong mahuli. Kailangan mo kasi ng malakas na signal, di ba? So, uh, eh, pinapakita lang nun na the, the influence of um, Japanese animations to, 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 to the cultures of other nations like the Philippines or other countries is very influential. Ang isa pa ay itong Power Rangers. The Power Rangers is uh, like a childhood TV show for me. Pinapalabas ito every Friday dati uh, sa Channel 2, Gabi, and English pa. So, um, this is 2020 version na. Iba yung medyo itsura niya nung early, early on. Of course, Sino bang hindi makakakilala sa kanila? The BTS. Hindi ba? They are now considered the most successful Korean uh, boy band that conquered the international scene. Na-form yung BTS noong 2010. But yung kanilang debut ay 2013. Um, hindi ko kilala lahat ang, sa kanila pero I think meron dyang ayoko na lang magpangalan baka magkamali ako uh, V yung isa dyan tapos may wag na lang baka magkamali ako sa mga BTS fans so ARMY yung tawag diba sa mga BTS fans and nagumpisa sila na makilala internationally nung around 2017 and then nung 2018 yun yung worldwide recognition nila talagang kumawala yung kasikatan nila sa mundo and uh, they, they are uh, from from the big hit entertainment isa sa mga biggest entertainment companies ng South Korea uh they are very, uh, they have a lot of fans in Asia, in Africa, in, uh, in Latin America, in North America. They are guesting in different shows and yung mga tao ay talagang umaaten, punong-puno yung mga stadium. So, if you will think of it, Paano ang isang Korean pop band na kumakanta ng Korea na may pailan-ilan na English words ay nakaka-penetrate sa international music scene? This one, this is uh, when they were invited to perform in the 2020 uh, International Grammys Music Awards. The Grammys is a very big, it's the biggest for um, music, if not the biggest or one of the biggest music awards. 
sa mundo. Uh, different artists and to be able to perform in that stage of Grammys ay sobrang laking big deal. And sila ay nakapag-perform din and na-awardan din sa Billboard Music Awards. So the influence of these Asians from South Korea influencing the world is so big, influencing providing cultural content to the people of the world, it is something that... Uh, originated in Asia that they export to the whole world. So, uh, some dynamics of Asian regionalism. ADB identified some factors that are influential in the integration of the Asian nations. Enhanced dialogue between citizens of various nations. This is facilitated by growing tourism activities in regions and consistent multilateral meetings among leaders of nation-state. Nung naging mas mura na yung pagta-travel, mas marami ng mga tao ang nakakapag-travel sa iba't ibang wansa. Uh, noong nag-click ang Korean pop, K-pop, K-drama, napakadami ng Filipinos yung pumunta sa South Korea to, to go to Nami Island at sa mga iba pang mga pinag ng mga iba't ibang mga drama. Ang dami na ding Filipinos ang interested pumunta sa Japan because naging relax na yung visa requirements nila, as well as Taiwan, wherein until next year ay magiging free ang visa for Filipinos. For the ASEAN naman, uh, ASEAN countries, sampung bansa yon kasama ang Pilipinas, ay eh, kaya nating makapag-travel doon. Uh, visa on arrival lamang. Uh, you can travel to Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar, Indonesia, uh, Vietnam, Laos, and... Um, Singapore, Malaysia, yan, very freely. And because of that, nai-increase yung dialogue between the people of these countries and nagiging maganda yung samahan. Isa pa is that in Asia, uh, nagkaroon ng expanding intra-regional trade and investments. This brings forth closer financial markets and independent economy. So, bumalik tayo doon sa ating mga lessons on economies earlier na talagang yung ating trades and investment with other countries have been strengthened. And that's because of uh, the, the more cooperation between countries, particularly dito sa Asia, Asian countries. And there's also increased connectivity. This is facilitated by regional infrastructure projects as well as delivering public goods. Um, naging maganda na yung logistics and uh, may infrastructure na um, better airports and uh, interconnectivity cables, internets and uh, fiber optics etc. So, yan yung mga dynamics paano natin i-describe ang Asian regionalism. Ano ba yung benefits ng Asian integration na ang mga bansa sa Asia ay, ay nagko-cooperate sa isa't isa at nagsasama-sama? It harnesses the strength of diverse economies. Diba? Iba't iba namang mga bansa, iba't ibang mga kultura. Pero yung diverse economies na yon ay pag pinagsama-sama mo ay talagang makakapuo ng isang magandang samahan at makakapagpalitan sila ng iba't ibang mga produkto na uh, mas mapapaunlad yung kanilang mga specific na kalakal at maiibenta nila sa ibang mga bansa. It provides platform for connecting financial markets. It makes the economy more resilient to global risks. It pools resources pag pinagsama-sama mo yung mga resources. And it creates regional mechanisms for safety and security. Hindi ba may mga issue tayo na, uh, na, na goes beyond borders? Uh, walang boundary na sinasaba, sinasabi. So, meaning, uh, ito yung mga borderless, katulad ng terrorism. Di ba, halimbawa, magkaroon ng isang terrorist uh, activity sa isang bansa, ay pwede itong kumalat pa sa borders ng ibang mga bansa. Evident yun sa Pilipinas at sa mga bansa sa south nito. Katulad ng Indonesia at Malaysia, may mga... Um, terrorist groups, members na nagta-travel dito sa Pilipinas para manggulo and that is proven by the history na may mga targets na gawin silang 
uh, attacks sa 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 kung sa mga areas ng uh, iba't ibang mga bansa. So kapag ka nagsasama-sama yung mga bansa when the nations integrate ay mas nagiging maganda yung mechanism para sa safety and security ng mga bansa. Ano ba yung mga challenges naman? There is a need to establish compatible product standards. The need to establish guidelines that buffer financial contagion and ensure compatible financial regulations. The need to coordinate macroeconomic policies. The need to manage cross-border environmental and social policies. Um, ang example nun ay fair treatment of migrant workers. Yun yung isa sa mga issues na, di ba, sinabi natin na madami tayong migrant workers and then they work in other parts of Asia. Halimbawa, they work in Singapore. For Filipinos, madami nag-work sa Singapore. Madami din nag-work sa Hong Kong o Hong Kong, China. Uh, and uh, sa Middle East, ang dami din ng mga kababayan natin na working as uh, um, domestic helpers and uh, iba pa na mga work. So, ano naman yung fair treatment? Kailangan mo kasi na talagang yung mga bansa ay magkasundo para protectionan yung mga workers, not only the domestic helpers, but iba pa, like hotel workers, uh, engineers, uh, laborers, construction workers, etc. And um, yung mga bansa, kailangan mag-usap kung paano talaga mapoprotektahan. Kasi ang dami natin ding cases na naaabuso yung mga uh, migrant workers natin. And uh, sinasabi na yung sinusweldo or yung benefits ay kulang pa sa dapat sanang tanggapin ng mga uh, migrant workers natin. So, yun yung sinasabi na kay, yun yung mga ilan sa mga challenges na kailangan pagtrabahuhan ng mga samahan ng mga uh, bansa o ng mga bansa mismo para ma, mas maging maayos yung ating uh, integration uh, na, as countries of Asia, in Asia, existing cooperation in Asia. Ito yung mga samahan ng mga bansa. Mayroon tayong Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. Ito yung APEC. Um, last time, nag-hold ang Pilipinas dito ng APEC kasama yung mga uh, member economies. Economies yung tawag eh, sa mga bansa na miyembro nito. East Asia Summit, Asia-Pacific Community, East Asian Community, the of course, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or the ASEAN. And the ASEAN plus three, China, Japan, and South Korea. Dito ay basically ay sinasabi lamang dito yung mga iba't iba ng pamamaraan kung paano natin mapapatiba yung ating samahan not only economically pero socially. Paano ba natin mapapauntwal yung kultura, yung people-to-people interaction ng mga tao? Paano natin mapapatiba yung security? And paano natin mas, uh, mas mapapaunlad ang mga bansa? Uh, sa mga uh, through this cooperations in Asia. So basically that is um uh, that is Asian regionalism. That is uh that is how we the dynamics of how we interact here in Asia and uh I hope that you learn something today. And uh, thank you very much and have a great day.